Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Legends. Uh, today um, we are going to play, actually to test and to analyze a deck submission from uh, Vodinok, uh, a user from Reddit. And the theme of the deck is Duke and Duchess. So it all revolves around having Sylt, Duchess of Dementia, and Thaden, Duke of Mania. Now, as a first glance at this build, I already see a problem. Uh, look at the curve. The curve is all over the place, <coughs> and the majority of creatures are in uh, um, four cost, three cost, and five cost. Um, which, if we'd say this was a mid deck, it'll still be bad. But as a crusader, you need to take advantage of, um, how should I say, the opportunities given by the archetype itself. Uh, you've got creatures with charge, you've got 5th Legion, uh, Legion Trainer. Now, in this build, the only uh, charge creatures are the uh, Battlefield Scrounger, which gives you an item once it slays, and uh, the four costs Aldron Arms Master. Now, there's also like the heavy battle axe, which I think can be easily uh, removed from the build. And a, a more deep problem uh, is in the theme itself. Having Sil, Duchess of Dementia, and Thaden. Um, Sil provides extra damage, while Thaden just gives you an extra card if you have uh, the creature with the most health in that specific lane. Now, against a lot of builds, not necessarily uh, tribunals or mages or um, decks with hard removals, even in aggressive uh, builds, you would see uh, Drive Mad and the Felder Mighty. And given the fact that the deck only has uh, Vigilant Giant, Sil, and Thaden as creatures with big stats, dropping Thaden onto a lane and then having it removed, uh, you would awfully risk that lane uh, becoming a nest for your opponent. Uh, very hard to contest it once the drawing starts and you basically lose from that point onwards. There's also no uh, with the Tanned Cultist. Uh, the deck feels alright, in a matter of speaking, if you draw Perfectly. If you don't, uh, Ayla Huntsmate will clunk your hand. Uh, False Incarnate is good. Uh, Phil the Mighty, we'd say, is also good. Phalanx Exemplar, let's say, it provides guard, but uh, Battlefield Scrounger, if it does not get um, buff by the, all the rallying that this deck has, uh, it's pretty pointless to have it in the deck. Uh, let's have a run or two with with uh, with this and and see how it goes. Okay, so first match playing against a sorcerer. Mm, I will definitely throw away Aeolus Huntmate. Got an orc, orc clan captain. This could be useful uh, with the uh, Mortal Executioner, provided we can break enough runes before, uh, I don't know, Sources of Negation happens. We'll have to skip our first turn. There is uh, one side of the problem. Oh boy. Too many stuff that can't be played in the early turns of the game. can cause you to lose momentum, and having the ring, it's pretty bad not being able to summon something on first turn or the second turn. If my hand would have been full of four cost creatures, because we have a lot of those, uh, things uh, could have gotten ugly and fast. Lightning Bolt. 
We were in luck because we played Red Run Battle Spear. Otherwise, Mortal Executioner would have been dead. We can go into... No, we won't break the ring. Let's play uh, double or clan captain. Mortal Executioner is up at 7 HP. Uh, sorry, 7 damage. But started to buff stuff in our hands. Firebolt on an old clan captain and Daggerfall Mage. Fiery Imp. I will play Fiery Imp into the Shadow Lane. And I will also use Morkel Gatekeeper and give a buff to the Orc Clan Captain. Now hopefully I won't trigger any Lightning Bolts. Yes, that's good. We will hit and rally for more. Okay, looks like Sil is taking all the rallying. <laughs> Play Fire Imp in the Shadow Lane, and this should provide us with some good damage. My opponent will be forced to um, trade the uh, Daggerfall Mage's Ward into the Immortal Gatekeeper. Or that. Ice Storm, and the entire lane has been cleared. My opponent is down to only 10 HP. And Sill has exactly 10 damage. Thanks to all the rallying done by, um, by the Immortal Executioner. Now we can uh, we can expect uh, Shackle, Sources of Negation, but it wasn't present so it looks like we've got lethal. <laughs> okay, this was an incredible amount of luck being able to pull that off so fast. Okay, so quick update. Just as expected, we encountered two tribunals and an archer, and uh, kind of lost like three games in a row, which was not the point. I mean, yeah, it was expected. I strongly feel that this deck can win against um, other aggressive decks, but not entirely. It's a combination of mid and aggro, but uh, with um, at, at some moments with unplayable hands. Okay, let's throw in Cool Law Keeper. That's, uh, this will, should protect our our fire imp from that wind keep spell sword plunder well here against the red run not sure yet if the red run is control or aggressive we'll find out soon enough loot interesting Let's play Aeolus Hunt, mate. Now let's draw a card. Excellent. An old clan captain. And Aeolus Hunt, mate, has now become a 4 4. Transformed out of the 3 3 default. Uh, what I see as my next move is laying down Phallax Exemplary. Uh, and Velocity Assassin, this kind of messes up our mojo. Because I'll have to put Phallax Exemplary into the field lane. And I will use my last ring charge to do so. There's no point in dropping it into Shadow Lane to protect the Fire Imp and uh, Ayla something because those will die anyway. Okay, we're heading good. 
Uh, let's draw Phallic's exemplary in the field lane. I'm hoping my opponent does not have any squished wimpies or um, quicksilver crossbows. Nope. Operation success. Ah, uh, but could be a javelin or cost into time. I don't think so. The deck. Two wing keep spell swords. The deck doesn't feel much like control. Haunting spirit. And the gavel of the ordinator. A javelin. Oh, how convenient. I got uh, a couple of options. One would be to um, to use the red run battle spear, but that would mess up my tempo. Trying to trade in, I'm not trying to do that. I'll just uh, javelin that. Most likely. Oh wow, the, the wing keep spell sword just got in. Astonishing boost. <laughs> Six damage. Mm -hmm. me, Market Bannerman. Alright. So this is an uh, aggro veteran after all. So I don't want to sacrifice my damage against that Market Bannerman. Let's play this baby and combine it with an Orc Clan Captain. Should be able to remove the Market Bannerman and I will only rally once. But I think that's, uh, that's okay because we have the main damage dealer. Unless we trigger that cost into time. Uh, as a card draw or a javelin from prophecy, it looks like we're safe. Uh, actually, there's also uh, there's also edict. I think we're <coughs> we're in a very good possession of winning. We've got lethal on the board. In case, oh, don't tell me. He's got like a full hand of uh, of Nord Firebrands. We can play Red Run uh, uh, Battle Spear and uh, and the Orc Clan Captain again. Oh, never mind. My opponent conceded. So yeah, we need to tinker with the deck a bit. Okay, so. Um we know what the problem is. Uh, let's uh, let's see how exactly did we improve on it. <clears throat> so we've taken out uh, Felix Exemplar. We've taken out a Battlefield Scrounger. Uh, we've also taken out a Piercing Javelin and Aelus Huntmate. Uh, added one more. Um, copy of Penitus Oculatus Agent. Removed the Sapper because it's... Uh, has no immediate value it can be easily remo removed um, I've also removed the Folder Mighty and the Heavy Battle Axe also got rid of the Vigilant Giant and Ayla the Huntress and uh, sorry Thadden but you got out I've kept uh, most of it so um, let's see how uh, how the new build looks like The new build, basically, I've kept the Fire Imp because it's a good immediate value uh, for the first uh, few turns. Kept Rapid Shot and Circle Initiate, Fifth Legion Trainer and Orc Clan Captain. We've added Warclaw Mercenary to maintain the rallying theme of the deck. We've added Crusader's Assault because the deck kind of lacked drawing capabilities. Uh, kept Cool Lock Keeper. Um, Added the one copy of Penitus Oculatus Agent, as I said, and added two copies of Candlehot Brawler and Dawnbreaker, Divine Fervor, two copies of Rampaging 
Minotaur. Uh, why the charge creatures rampaging Minotaur and uh, Candlehawk Brawler to benefit from the extra rally. We also have, because we have a great number of orcs, like orc, uh, three copies of Orc Clan Captain and three copies of um, Morkul Gatekeeper, we have two copies of Woodock Headhunter and one copy of Underwood Vigilante. We've kept still the Duchess and added uh, one aspect of a scene uh, for some finishing moves. Um, this is basically it. And you'd notice something very, very differently about how the deck behaves. Uh, because we are going to play uh, uh, a match with it and see how it goes. But take a look at the curve. The curve here is just about right. We've got uh, some one cost a uh, fair number of two costs and four costs, kind of equal, and a great deal number of three costs. Why? Because uh, as, the, as the match progresses, you kind of want to have some value out of the cards, and uh, keeping the curve uh, stuck up in, uh, in, in two costs uh, will sometimes cost you momentum, because you'll be summoning flimsy creatures that can be easily removed, uh, Death by Ice Storm, and um, you had no finishing moves in, in the old deck. Now, with, with the old uh, Woodock Headhunter, with the Underworld Vigilante, Divine Fervors, and uh, Aspect of a Scene, also not to mention all the, uh, the extra charge creatures, uh, should prove that uh, once you pick a theme, it's not always the right one. But... It's in our power and duty uh, to learn and to adapt and to improve our decks and become better players. So let's hop on and, uh, and play a match with this one. Okay, so we are matched against... Against the Ilalu. Mm. We've got some decent cards, we'll keep those. We'll see soon if it's a uh, an aggro Lalu or a control Lalu. We don't have the ring. Uh, I will throw down circle initiate. Just to see how my opponent responds to this. Mm. We drew a uh, candle hot brawler. Which we can use if it gets uh, properly buffed by the Red Run Battle Spear. Yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, uh, the Crusader's Assault would be very good, but All Clan Captain is also um, a good card, especially in these early turns. We want to establish board supremacy. Oh no, I'll finish off. Yeah, so it looks like it's a control Lalu. Ooh, we've got a 5th Legion Trainer. Let's get rid of that uh, Moon Sugar Smuggler. Dealt some breakthrough damage and got rid of some potential magic again. Oh, don't tell me he's Archer's Gambit. No! Okay, so we are in luck. The zero cost was not something to affect us immediately. Uh, we'll use Candlehawk Brawler to uh, get rid of that Pilgrim. And on next turn, we got six Magicka. We can play a lot of things. I'd go for an Oakland Captain, another Moon Sugar Smuggler. Lethal. Well, we can bypass that. Also have a rapid shot. Nah, I won't play it right now. Fifth Legion Trainer helps us with summoning... I'll go with the old clan captain and uh, the black dragon. We got a nasty, nasty field lane compared to my opponent's shadow lane. 
So there's sh there should be no obstacle in, in me fin finishing the game. Unless uh, we'll get like a Dawn's Wrath. Rid of execution. Trying to get rid of my big stuff, eh? Silencing the old clan captain. Nice thinking. Removing three extra damage. But I will be dealing nine damage in one go. So let's uh, let's see. No, hope, hope no prophecies happen. Uh, we're going to play a Woodlock Headhunter. And this will basically leave my opponent with just 4 HP. Bam! Okay. Bit of execution uh, completed. I'd say we have... a good chance of taking the game home. <clears throat> Unless uh, some shackle happens. Okay, that's a uh, lethal guard. And a thief skill recruit. Well, so far so good because I can play rapid shot, then sacrifice something. And I can even play Crusader's Assault and take the match home, but my opponent conceded. Well, hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers. Cheers.